That's the hook. Look, I'm so glad that you're here today. I remember when you was born, all I could do was- Hey guys, we're here, and today we'll be looking at the Raspberry Pi Pico. This is the newest addition to the Raspberry Pi family, and instead of being a microcomputer like the 3B Plus, for example, this one here is a standalone microcontroller. So this one can be used in different applications such as robotics or equipment testing, even games. But today we'll be creating a photography turntable using 3D printed parts and the Raspberry Pi Pico. And the 3D parts were drawn up on the site Tinkercad, which is a pretty straightforward 3D modeling program that anyone can use. If you don't have access to a 3D printer, there are quite a number of print on demand services online that will allow you to send your design through, they'll print it and then ship it to you. I'll leave a link to a couple of those down in the description. Now, just a quick disclaimer, due to the size of the stepper motor used in this project, it can handle spinning around lighter objects really well, but if you try something really heavy, the motor simply isn't powerful enough to spin something like that. So just a fair warning what this one's capable of. To start off with, these are the electrical parts you'll need. A Raspberry Pi Pico, small integrated breadboard with these dimensions, six male to socket jumper wires, two socket to socket jumper wires, Arduino power module, stepper motor, motor driver board with a ULN2003 driver chip, micro USB cable to USB-A, and a nine volt battery with a barrel jack plug connection. In terms of hardware, a Lazy Susan table bearing assembly, four number four size six millimeter long self tapper screws, and four M3 by 10 threaded spacers four M3 by 10 millimeter screws. The tools you'll need include a Phillips screwdriver, a 3D printer, or have access to a 3D printing service, vernier calipers for measuring components, and a hot glue gun or blue tack, depending on if you want to reuse the components for another project. Now this project can be broken down into five main parts. Setting up the Raspberry Pi Pico and coding environment on your computer, building the electrical circuit, coding the program that will make the electrical parts function, designing and printing parts to assemble the turntable, and then lastly, assembling the turntable and final testing. To begin with, we need to set up the Raspberry Pi Pico. And to do this, we need a program called Thonny. You can get it from this website address. And once it's downloaded and installed, you use it to write MicroPython code to run a program on the Pico once it's powered on. Once you have Thonny downloaded and installed, the next step is to add MicroPython firmware to the Pico. We do this by attaching the Raspberry Pi to the breadboard, connect the micro USB cable to the Pico, and hold down the boot cell button on the Pico, and while holding it down, connect the cable then to the USB port on your computer. There should now be a USB drive type device pop up with two files. Open index.hdm, Click on the MicroPython and click on the download UF2 file button. Once downloaded, drag the file from your downloads folder into the Pico folder. And now Pico can communicate with Thonny to load programs onto the device using code we've written. Now that the Pico is set up, it's time to start building the electrical circuit. And to do that, you'll need the following things in front of you. Breadboard, Pico, six male to socket jumper wires, two socket to socket jumper wires, Arduino power module, ULN2003 motor driver circuit board, stepper motor, and lastly, the nine volt battery and barrel jack plug. Start by attaching the Pico with the micro USB connector facing out and insert it into the breadboard, lining one side of the pins up with the C column and the other side into the H column. This leaves us enough room to fit the wires beside the microcontroller in order to connect it with the motor driver. Using this diagram, we're going to install wires connecting the GPIO pins 1, 2, 4, and 5 to the motor driver board corresponding IN1, 2, 3, and 4 labeled pins in order for the Pico to be able to talk with the motor chip to tell the stepper motor when to move. So pin 1 will connect to IN1 pin, 2 with IN2, etc. Next up, using this diagram of the circuit, we connect the positive and negative wires to the breadboard and motor controller board so that the circuit can be powered on by the nine volt battery when it's connected to the Arduino power module. The power module looks a little different in the circuit diagram, 
but as long as your black wires are connected to the ground pins or the pins labeled GND on the power module and the red wires to the pins labeled VCC or 5 volt, the circuit will work correctly. On the breadboard, the red wire is connecting to pin 40 on the Pico and the negative wire to pin 23, which is a negative or earth terminal for the Pico. Finally, attach the stepper motor plug into the motor drive board and plug in the micro USB cable into the Pico and the other end into your computer. Now it's time to code our program which will make the stepper motor turn a full 360 degrees on loop continuously. To do this, we first need to look at the ULN2003 motor driver chip documentation where it states to move the motor forward, we have to put specific pins high for a moment in order for the spindle to turn. Pin 1, then pin 1 and 2, then 2 and 3, and so on. In the MicroPython coding language, it can be done like so. First, we'll start by configuring GPO, GP1, GP2, and GP3 pins for output. The code looks like this. Next, we need to write those steps as pins that must have a status of high to move. Based off which step we are currently in, we can select which pins must be set to high. After reaching the last element, the sequence starts from the beginning. So here we have an infinite loop that for current step sets all pins to low, then sets selected pins to high increments step number and waits one millisecond. So this code will turn the stepper motor clockwise and if you want to slow it down, you just change the number of milliseconds the wait time is set to. If you want the stepper motor to run in reverse, you simply write the steps out like so and it will make the motor start in the final position pin four and move backwards. We'll now save this to the Raspberry Pico and save it under the name main.py which when named this will automatically run the program when the picker has powered on. So next up is designing the turntable base and top plate. For this, I like to use a program called Tinkercad, which is a free online software, which is great for hobbyists and also has some tutorials to get you up and running really quickly. I wanted the stepper motor to be inset to the base and spin an upper section whilst the lower part remains stationary. So I started by measuring the stepper motor itself to work out how the base would be designed around it and it being the center of the model. The stepper motor spindle was positioned off center to the motor, so I had to make sure it was the center point. It also needed to sit down into the lower section enough to where the only part sticking out the top was the spindle to attach the table to. I left enough space under the base to fit all the electronic components so they were hidden and could be attached to the underside without being in the way so much. It also made it a lot cleaner looking and easy to move around too. Admittedly, it did take a few revisions to get it exactly how I wanted, but sometimes when you're making something from scratch, you have to expect that things won't always turn out perfect, in which case revisions are kind of a expected thing to happen. Once I had the 3D model complete, I saved it as an STL file and sliced it in Cura, which I find to be the easiest to use to create a 3D printer file, and transferred it to a micro SD card and printed the two separate pieces on my Ender 3 3D printer and all up the printing time was a little over 25 hours. Once you have the design dialed in though, and you're happy with it, the 3D printer pretty much takes care of the rest. So we have the picker set up, the code's been written, the electrical circuit's been built, and the model's been printed out. It's now time to put it all together. Fit the stepper motor into the base first and screw it down into place with two number four size, six millimeter long self-tapper screws. To fit the wires through the channel, I remove them from the plug, and before you do this, make sure to take a picture so you know the order they go back in. Then run the wires through the channel, running down through the turntable base. A tip here is to run one or two wires first, and then tape any additional wires to the existing wire that has been run already, and pull the rest through. Once they're through, reconnect the wires into the plug one by one, making sure to get the orientation right. You shouldn't be able to pull the wires through once they're locked in. Next up, mark out where the bearing plate will sit central to the stepper motor spindle and secure it over the top of the stepper motor, leaving the spindle sticking out the top for the table to connect to. Push down the table section onto the spindle and let it sit on the top bearing plate. Now flip the turntable upside down to start fitting the electrical circuit components inside the base. Start by fitting the breadboard and pico attached. 
fit the 9 volt battery and barrel jack plug connection. Fit four spacers and screws to the motor driver board. And secure it into place next to the battery, either with blue tack or a hot glue gun for a more permanent job. Fit the Arduino power module to the other side and tidy up the wiring so that none of it is sticking out below the base. And make sure enough space is left to connect and disconnect the power plug easily into the power module. Once all the electrical parts are secured, that's the assembly done. When the barrel jack plug is connected to the power module, it automatically runs through the program and starts spinning the table. Overall, it turned out to be a really fun project to make and you could definitely upgrade it sometime in the future with an on-off switch and some other add-ons to make it more customizable. This one definitely serves its purpose as a photography turntable and I was surprised at how much weight it could hold too. The Raspberry Pi Pico is a great addition to the lineup and is a good option for makers out there who need a low cost microcontroller at just four US dollars. Let me know down in the comments below what you're planning to make with the Raspberry Pi Pico and I'll be down there answering any questions too. So that's it from me. If you're interested in making this same project, I left a link to all the project files down below as well as a link to the Raspberry Pi Pico and all the materials you need too. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe for more tech videos in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh my God.